Hi, Luca. Uh, so we started the recording now. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about mental health awareness and for you to share your story um, and how it has had an impact in your life. Um, and yeah, like, um, what have you gone through um, surrounding mental health? Do you have any story to share? Um yeah, so basically I sort of got like diagnosed with um, split personality disorder, like bipolar, if that makes sense. And the doc- I kept saying to doctors, you know, I feel suicidal, you know, I want to kill myself, da, da, da. And they were like, oh, we'll just give you some antidepressants. But they didn't work, but like, they made me feel worse. Like I tried like, they say, oh, you know, take them for like four to six weeks. That makes sense for it like to kick in. But they were just making me feel more depressed. Like I didn't want to eat. I couldn't sleep. Um, so I said to the doctor, you know, um, I, you know, I'm depressed, you know, I'm not taking them. And then I ended up in hospital because I had stomach problems and they were like, oh yeah, it's all down to your mental health. It's all in your head. So it was like the NHS was sort of like trying to make me look bad. Does that make sense? Like wasting their time. And I said to my gastroenterologist, I was like, no, there is actually something wrong. You know, I'm in so much pain with my stomach. And in the end, they found out what was wrong with it. Um, it was called something called SIBO, which is small intestinal overgrowth bacteria in the gut. So it's like really bad bacteria. So it was like wrecking the gut. So that was making me even more sort of anxious, depressed, like I didn't want to be alive. And then obviously I got that sorted and that was fine. But, you know, having this split personality disorder, bipolar is quite hard for me to manage sometimes. Sometimes I'm like really high and happy. And then the next minute I'm like, oh, I feel really suicidal or once I have the sort of like an alcoholic drink with my friends, I go a bit mad. Does that make sense? I do really crazy, stupid things. Um, I've just st- started seeing someone because I've been single for seven years. And I think mental health has played a massive part in me um, not having someone, if that makes sense, for seven years. Because I felt like, what's that saying? If you don't love yourself, then no one else is going to love you. Yeah, uh, exactly. I agree with that. Yeah. And then I tried to kill myself last year. I got on the train. Well, this is when it was so bad, like the lockdown of COVID, that really affected me. Um, so I was really, really depressed, suicidal, like had no money, wasn't working, and I was ill as well. So I got on the train tracks near where I live and I laid on the tracks and tried to kill myself. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, my friend rang me on my phone. Obviously, I answered it and she said, get off the tracks. So she obviously came and got me off the tracks at where I live because obviously the train was literally like so close to me. Um, but yeah, when I have a drink, I go a bit crazy. Like it sends my mental health a bit mad. So um, when you were like on the train tracks, did that, was that part of your bipolar? Like Yeah, I, yeah, I had, yeah I had a bit of like a really bad episode because obviously when I go to like work in London and stuff, I don't really think about it anymore because my life's a lot, lot better than it was. Um, you know, I always think, oh, you know, I want to jump in front of the train or does that make sense? I used to have these silly like thoughts in my head like, oh, you know, do it. Does that make sense? So it changes you as a really bad person, but then it can change you as a good person, you mean? Yeah. Like it just depends what you're feeling yeah um, and I think something triggered me that day because I didn't get this job I wanted so I was like oh fuck it just jump in front of the train yeah yeah gosh so w- when you were on the train tracks didn't anyone on the platform see you there was no one there to- because where I live is really rural like it's literally a rural station and because ev- everywhere was closed because of covid because the lockdown um I think it was what, tri- what triggered me oh, the most right. uh, when I was- I went past my gym and it was closed. So I got really depressed about that because I used to go to the gym every day. So it was like a massive thing taken out of my life. And um, so were you born with this or like, did it, like how, how did bipolar happen? What was the cause for this? Well, I think there was a bit like when I was growing up, there was sort of like my mum's obviously got bipolar and she's like a, like a manic depressive and obviously you know, my dad got custody of me and my sister, otherwise, you know, we would have gone into care. But then my gran looked after us because she's basically like more like my mum than my mum is, if that makes sense. Like my gran took custody of me and my sister. Um, So we moved in with her, but it does run in the family. Um, My mum's obviously got bipolar and she's not depressive. My sister gets quite depressed. My auntie's, yeah, she gets quite depressed as well. Um, So obviously it runs in the family.
Yeah, I think depression and stress really can lead to, like, depression already is a mental health in itself, and it can lead to worse. Um, Battle in your own mind every day is, is quite hard. Exactly. And what would you say, like, your advice is to for people who do suffer from mental, like, from bipolar? What advice can you give? Uh, my advice would be sort of, you know, keep active, you know, work out every day, eat healthy, go out for a walk. You know, just think there's, I always think when I'm depressed, you know, there's someone out there that's worse off than me. Um, and obviously I've been at rock bottom and now I'm a lot better than I was. And and was it the medication that made you better or was it just you keeping no busy and keeping active? You weren't on medication at all? No, I went off it because I, I said to you it made me feel really, really suicidal, depressed, like stomach pains. Like they make these these antidepressants are really not good for your body. Like because obviously I went to see like naturopaths and acupuncture, so I've literally done the whole lot. And I would not recommend anybody to get on those antibiotics because they're really addictive. Um, and then the doctor gave me stuff like um, citalopram. That was it. I was on and. Oh God, what's that other one really cool that everybody takes? Zapain or something like that. I think it's Zapain. Uh, yeah. There's, there's Valium. That's it, Valium. I used to take that to try and sleep because obviously I find with mental health as well, like it affects your sleep as well. Like it affects every single part of your body, which people don't realise. Yeah. It's better to cure naturally, like you said. And um, did you get therapy as well? Like, did, Yeah, did you... when I was younger, um... I went to be like a psychiatrist and stuff because obviously they thought I was a bit crazy. But um, I always say the good, the good people are always crazy, I always say. Um, yes. And uh, I mean, yeah, obviously I went to see a psychiatrist, yeah. Nobody is perfect. We all go through something, you know, and... I think it's mainly the stress that can lead to mental health, you know, and what happens in, but I think it's, it's like you said, keep your mind busy always and just try to think positive. I know it's just easier said than done, isn't it though? Yeah. Today I've just woke up and I was like, oh, I have, I've got work to do for this company for the social media, but I just think, oh, I can't really be bothered. Does that make sense? I'd rather just stay in bed and yeah, it's hard sometimes. I know. And and what do you do? What work? So I'm an what, actor. I do modelling. I've done adverts, films. Um, I do like social media for companies, sort of like for their TikTok and Facebook and stuff. That's really cool. So you enjoy all of that. That's really good. Yeah, I love my job. Yeah, yeah. I, before I was in like a nine to five dead end office job, which I was really depressed. And I think that's what was making me depressed as well, because I was travelling to London every day and I was getting really tired and I was getting poorly and that obviously has a massive impact, you know, on your mental health as well and your well-being. So you feel now that, you, you know, obviously you're much better now and you feel that you've changed as a person now. Is that yeah. what you feel like? Yeah, I think it's because I was living in sort of like a, a damp, like a mouldy flat, you know, my old flat. And then I moved into this brand new flat um, last May and it's like changed my whole life, if that makes sense. Yes. So and one more question, um, like if you saw a friend or a family like suffering from what you suffered of or any mental health in general, what's the first thing you would do to help them? Just talk to them, you know, and come up with a plan to make sure they're OK and make sure they're safe and just and yeah. give, and give them my advice about what I was going through last year. Exactly, because people can relate to your story. So, yeah, well, thank you so much. No, it's good. It was nice talking to you. And have you got any other questions for me or anything? Uh, yeah, I just, yeah, I just think if you're having a bad day, you know, just, just, just get on with it, really. You know, life's too short. You know, I've lost, you know, I lost my granddad last year in Italy and he was quite close. Um, so, yeah, you know, you just have to get on with it and try and ride it out. But don't get on antidepressants. <laughs> No, it's, yeah, I think it really makes it worse, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it's not natural. It's, it's not natural for you. 
No, I, I'm one of these people, like, with all this COVID jabs and stuff, you know, I just think, you know, if there's a natural way, I'll cure it. Does that make sense? I, I don't I don't believe in all these trial jabs. Yeah, yeah me too. Yeah, I don't either, because you don't know what you're putting in your body. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, how many jabs are we at now? Five. And it's, you know, it's killed, it killed my granddad in Italy. It's injured my family here. Like, I've seen friends being so injured by them, and it's so sad. I know. And I have to obviously tell them, because obviously I've, you know, seen the evidence and stuff that they don't know what's in them. And then it's just like, oh, just stressful as well. Yeah, it's different chemicals you're putting in your body. You shouldn't trust that. It's true. No. It's not yeah. even a jab. It's like an MRI trial. We're all like part of a trial. It's true. Like we're um, robots or something. Yeah, right. You know? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But, yeah, thank you so much. I'm just no, going to stop the recording. Hold on. <laughs> so will this be um, 